start? Yeah, right. So my topic is I'm Dr. Lippi and uh, I was uh, associated with Arvind Eye Care System for some years. Now I am practicing in Durg, Chhattisgarh. Uh, the topic for today is optical coherence tomography in glaucoma. No financial disclosures here. There are many varied tests to diagnose glaucoma and predict its progression. Some of them have been dealt with the past two speakers and visual fields will be dealt by Dr. Palani Swami. What we need to remember is glaucoma is a clinically diagnosed disease based on a structural and functional examination. Anterior segment OCT is mainly to feature the angle anatomy. This has helped in understanding the use of early cataract surgery in narrow angle glaucomas. Also, a rather recent use of OCT has been in morphology of bleb, which helps to manage the impending bleb failure. Posterior segment OCT is the prime coverage of the presentation. ONH, peripapillary nerve fiber layer or RNFL and macular thickness are the three components used in glaucoma. We will be dealing with each uh, section wise. So the first component is ONH, optic nerve head analysis. This is a classical printout of Zeiss OCT. In this, we can find the optic nerve head analysis results outlined as disc area, cup area, rim area, CDR. It is 0.85 in this case, which is also reflected in the infrared image. So it's a big cup. Corresponding uh, spectral is uh, its opto view. So corresponding opto view RT view picture of ONH analysis. I won't be able to cover all three types of OCT. So I'll be just showing some random pics. Second component is RNFL analysis. We all know that healthy RNFL is thicker at superior and inferior quadrants. Now, what we need to recall or remember is that diameter of 3.45 millimeter is the area around the optic nerve head where the RNFL analysis is done. So this has got fallacies of its own. This is RNFL thickness average analysis, various zones. A second zone is TSNIT with age, mage, age matched normative. Third is TSNIT overlap of two eyes. Fifth is data table and seventh is percentile color coding. Uh, this is known to us, percentile color coding. One percent of normals, they fall within the red band. So this is considered outside normal limits for most of the population. But we should remember that one person do fall within this red zone. Uh, this is again the corresponding uh, RNFL analysis on another machine that is Hiddelberg Spectralis. This is HFA visual fields and serous RNFL combined report. So just for example, like here, if it's a case which is having inferior scotomas corresponding superior RNFL defect can be seen in all this thickness map and thickness deviation map and in the curve in the graph. Uh, similarly, in the left eye, we are finding it's a sort of uh, advanced or moderate glaucoma with lots of scotomas and we find red zones in the OCT also. This is RNFL analysis with the spectralis OCT. So there are minor differences between all these three types of OCT. So nothing major. Optic disc photograph, if we have, this is the right eye, which is having some superior rim thinning we are getting the characteristic inferior scotoma and in this we are finding so many red zones so in the superior because there's superior thinning so superior is red and also temporal and some part of inferior is also in the red zone os on the other hand the left eye it uh, the disc optic disc looks to be fairly normal and we are getting visual fields and the oct to be normal the third component is macular thickness analysis so gcc we know that it is composed of nfl plus gcl plus ipl so this becomes thinner in the glaucomatous eyes we are able to detect glaucoma at an early stage with the gcc oct normal macular thickness is something like this this is a eye sprint out and in the case of glaucoma the rnfl is of course thinned out so the curve goes into the red zone where do we 
have this use of GCC. We see many practical examples. So this is an example of normal RNFL thickness, wherein around the optic nerve, it is all warm colors, yellow and red. The curve is also in the green zone. RNFL thickness appears normal. But when we see the significance map of GCC, then there is a red zone around fovea that is implying that there is loss of ganglion cells. So this might be glaucoma. This is where we, uh, GCC helps us. This is uh, the ganglion cell OU analysis report. This is how the film looks like. Progression analysis is the fourth component where OC is used increasingly these days. This is in early and moderate glaucomas, not to be in severe glaucomas. So these are the two baseline reports and uh, the signal strength we need to check on all visits, of course. We are finding that the warmer colors are disappearing in the later stages and in the significance map, we are getting some red zone. So this slope also, this gets plotted on its own, inferior RNFL thickness slope. We are finding that it is declining and the rate of change is minus 6.01. Also note that CDR is almost stable. The rate of change here is 0 0.00. So this might be progression. Another example of progression. Here we are finding some thinning of the inferior rim. This is an artifact. The yellow one is an artifact. And perimetry when we do, one has been unreliable. This is 2016 reliable. And we are uh, when we do this OCT, we are finding that the thickness of RNFL, it is slightly decreasing from 64 to 50 micron. So this again might be progression. We need to wait, wait with other clinical parameters. Uh, this is the preperimetric glaucoma where OCT, again, it is useful. Uh, this uh, might be labeled as a big cup, physiological cup, but we are finding here some hemorrhage. So this may be due to systemic factors. We don't know what's, what's the cause of it. Uh, SAP is normal. When we see OCT, we are finding some yellow on here and also the RNFL graph, the curve, it is not really into the green. It's going towards yellow. So again, we need to be cautious with this size. So this is the use of OCT. Again, we, used, uh, we have to have some caution in using any machine, including OCT. So what are the factors which we need to give uh, importance to? Signal is strength for different machine, it is different. Acquisition fault, ring not concentric with optic disc or if the patient blinks, hazy media, like PCO commonly or even early to moderate cataract, the small pupils, segmentation error like PVD. So this can all give some false readings. So this is one interesting example. Now this is the myopic disc, slightly myopic disc of the same patient. Patient's forehead was a little away from the band or he had some head tilt maybe. And so we are getting here, there is no RNFL. Here the RNFL has started appearing and here suddenly it appears nicely. So we need to have correct positioning of the patient. About the signal strength, we all know 5 to 10 signal strength that is increasing and we are getting RNFL size increase, thickness increase from 97 microns to 118 microns. Scan location and eye movements that does affect results poorly centered. If it is too inferior, the circle is too inferior, we are getting inferior RNFL loss and similarly superior RNFL loss. Then we have the effect of blink. So error due to blink, if missing data represented in black suddenly, and we are getting red in the deviation map. Artifact effect of floaters. This is the PVD, which is not within the measuring circle. So this is not affecting the OCT. This is the Hidelberg spectralis OCT. When this PVD vitreous floater goes and sits on the disc, then it affects the center of a scan, there's loss of data, which represents the nasal NFL. So we need to be careful in case of PVDs. Again, the normal superior and inferior RNFL bundles look something like this. There is something like uh, an entity like physiologically split RNFL bundle. So if that is there, then that may be interpreted as apparent RNFL thinning. Red disease and green disease, we have read on this. Red disease is false positive. Thinner RNFL of a high myope does not confirm to the limits identified by a normative database. And so everything falls in red. 
myopes again we say that ganglion cell analysis that is more of a uh, oct more of a data which we should rely on rather than the rnfl thinning sometimes it may be falsely read but most times ganglion cell analysis oct is the choice in myopes large vitreous floater in the case of left eye these are the two vitreous floaters so these are obscuring the signal within the measuring circle and this is influencing the rnfl thickness in case of left eye again i want you to note here the irregular shape of the optic nerve which is not there in right eye and also the segmentation error so see this blood vessels are discontinuous so what this indicates motion artifact patient has moved his or her eye green disease red disease ka just opposite hai ye so what is green disease uh, this is false negative so there is glaucoma but the oct shows all green and white green is not always clean so left eye is normal all warmer colors here first let's see this optic disc picture rather so in this there is some superior rim thinning perimetry is done there is there are some inferior scotomas so oct has been advised and what we get is some superior rnfl thinning but just see here it's all showing green and white even though it is 11 by 5 micron in the superior quadrant as compared to 156 in inferior and the left eye is 159 and 169 but it is not showing glaucoma in the superior or the superior rnfl thinning is not being shown here so we need to be cautious about this green disease also so all in all to conclude man is a slow sloppy but sloppy but brilliant thinker machines they are fast accurate but stupid so we need to have a synergy of both to get the best results thank you aios and thank you all co-instructors and chief instructor dr shiraz alisa thank you